This is Dr. Ravi Godse. You might have heard the chatter on social media platforms that there are a lot of cardiac events, strokes, thrombotic events, and that too happening in a population which is unusual, younger people, athletes. And the big question is whether it is all somehow related to vaccination. The short answer is no. But let's examine. What kind of evidence do we have? There are two types of evidences. One is what comes by a big major scientific journal or study. If you do a PubMed search and ask this question, nothing jumps. Anecdotal evidence is generally the lowest form of evidence. But now in era of this pandemic, even the journals, what they were printing at time, it was like utter nonsense. It means at times it was irritatingly annoying. At times it was downright dangerous, whatever they were printing. And anecdotal evidence, it should not be dissed because it can be used very effectively at time. I used it myself during India's Omicron saga. When cases were going up and people were suddenly saying, oh my God, now we are going to see 80,000 hospital admissions and all that. And people were about to hit the panic button and start catching the beds. I'd recommended in one of the videos, a simple anecdotal study. And I'd said, just stop the video, pick up the phone, call everybody you know, and see if you can find one person who's having trouble breathing or requiring oxygen. And the answer was a reassuring zero. Hardly anybody was getting to the hospital or was requiring oxygen. Omicron was mild. And that anecdotal evidence helped. And another way of anecdotal uh, evidence is, say you hear that somebody's uncle took the vaccine and he got into trouble and you are getting it forwarded from 50 groups. If you dig deeper, you might realize that it is just one person who had heard somebody that it happened to and he sent it to somebody and now all the 50 groups that are forwarding it to you just are mentioning one person. It is not 50 uncles, it is just one uncle. Even one is too many. But it appears a little bigger than it actually is. And there is also what we call as a psychological or a institutional bias towards this story. We are saying that, oh my God, we never saw such stories before. Maybe we did. But like three months ago, if you saw a story about Ukraine or Ukrainian president, who would have clicked on it? Now people are interested in Ukraine. So maybe before the pandemic, we were getting stories about this, but we were just, we had a blind eye. We were ignoring it. Now we are so hypersensitive and we are so acutely interested in all this that we are clicking on this story and giving it more importance. This is a statistical bias. Now, statistics, as you know, is used by scientists as a drunk uses a lamppost, more for support than for illumination. Statistics can be used to prove or disprove anything. If you look at vaccine causing cardiac inflammation, say in adolescence, can Moderna vaccine cause it? Absolutely, yes. Most of those kids, almost all, all kids got better and got recovered completely from the myocardial inflammation in adolescence that was caused by Moderna. Maybe it happened because of the higher dose. If you look at that community, COVID can cause myocardial inflammation too. So in any particular community at any given time during this pandemic, the chance of causing myocardial inflammation due to COVID was higher than that of chance of having myocarditis from the vaccine, which is the science. But statistics cut both ways. Like Joseph Stalin used to say, one million people dying is statistics. One person dying is a tragedy. So how can you tell the parents of the child, the child who developed myocardial inflammation, that their kid was more likely to develop this inflammation from COVID and not from the vaccine. If a rare event of one in 10,000 happens in that one person, then for him or her, it is 100%. The one in 10,000 really doesn't matter to him. This is, they say like the vaccine side effects are very rare or all these things are very rare. But even winning lottery ticket is rare. Winning a lottery ticket worth millions of dollars. The chance is similar to getting hit by lightning twice on a summer's day, but that is very rare. But people do, do still win lottery tickets. 
that's why lotteries are still in business so if you look at the vaccines data the question is do they cause thrombotic events and the answer is yes they can cause thrombotic events they cause a syndrome like hit heparin induced thrombocytopenia type of syndrome initially we thought it was happening in younger people and females but now the later studies have shown that there is no such distinction it can happen in anybody it typically doesn't happen with the mrna vaccines it happens with the adenovirus vaccine and in particular covishield which was used in india the astrazeneca vaccine it is seen with johnson and johnson which is the us uh, adenovirus vaccine interestingly it wasn't seen with seen with china's cancino bio which is also adenovirus russia's gamelia sputnik dose 1 or 2 which is a mixture of cancino bio and johnson and johnson it wasn't seen with them it was seen somewhat with covishield and johnson and johnson and the effect was the the chance of clot was extremely low in covid can also cause clots covid can also cause cause thrombotic disease so in, again the chance of vaccine causing problem was so less and the chance of covid causing clots was so much higher that it was no brainer to recommend a vaccine it is changing little bit and we'll come to that but this was a very small segment of thrombotic events now they have come up with a pretty big study and in vaccinated people they measured some inflammatory markers like that indicate the inflammation of the uh, epithelium or endothelium not epithelium endothelium and they were looking at certain inflammatory markers and they said they appear to be high i think this study is dangerous and this is a dangerous nonsense and that brings us to the studies that they were doing during second wave in india i can tell you one thing very simply by my clinical experience there is no point in doing a study unless you know what you are going to do with the positive result you are not like kids playing on the play just let just check and see what happens no this is wrong imagine like a patient who had had covid was recovering on his own was fine and dandy for no reason we would do like a d dimer and the il6 and the crp which we knew was going to be high when the d dimer was high you would be obligated to do a hrct then the hrct was going to show something because the patient gets better first the x ray gets better later and then people were doing studies to see if the hrct score has gotten better i can think of anything utterly idiotic or than doing a study than repeating a hrct to see if the score has gotten better as a clinician i can tell you the best barometer of how the patient is doing is talking to the patient this talking to the patient is not a big deal listening to the patient is where the wheels come off means i think we have forgotten the ancient art of listening if a patient tells that he is having pain in the ear before she or he is allowed to finish the story like which ear what we just jump in and ask right ear left ear acute or chronic we just we don't let anybody talk we don't let anybody finish their sentence so if we just listen to the patient see how they are doing all these studies were not needed so similarly doing these studies to see if there are inflammatory markers increased by the vaccines is pointless now why could there be so much cardiac disease there are two obvious answers one is what are the risk factors for the heart disease or like thrombotic events or atherosclerosis hypertension diabetes smoking age and the most important stress do you think people were stressed in past two years this might have been the most stressful experience for most of us so could that have contributed to the increased cardiac disease absolutely yes could covid have contributed to the increased thrombotic risk and cardiac absolutely directly and indirectly covid was a thrombogenic state and there were millions of cases and millions of hidden cases that was causing thrombogenic that could have been responsible for that 
and indirectly a person who was having issues with the heart might have chosen to stay at home rather than going to the hospital to protect themselves from covid and in the meantime getting in trouble with heart disease so now things are getting little tricky and the reason for that trickiness is suppose a vaccine causes a very minimal thrombotic effect and you say well you know if you get covid you can get lot of thrombosis and vaccine will protect you so it's safer to take the vaccine the risk benefit ratio previously during the hay days of the vaccines when they first came around december 2020 pfizer moderna etc were more than 90% effective in preventing mild covid so you were telling the patient in effect that you have a very small risk of thrombosis which was not seen with the mrna vaccine you have a very small risk of a problem but you also have a huge risk of a thrombotic problem with covid and you are saved from that so the risk benefit ratio is always in your favor the benefits are much higher now the vaccines protection has dipped from 90% to almost 30% so the chance of covid is now 60% higher and with that comes the chance of thrombosis so the risk have not increased but the benefit has shrunk but there is another side to it most of the thrombotic side effects and complications of covid are seen in people who were seriously ill with covid and vaccines continue to protect against serious disease so that risk benefit ratio is still maintained by the vaccines it is still safe to take the vaccine and people should continue to vaccinate and take the booster dose but we are we are not taking this lightly we are people of science so if the second booster or the fourth dose that united states is recommending it is on a pretty shaky ground the data is not solid so we are waiting and rather than using the same vaccine which was devised 2 years ago maybe it is time to change the formula and tailor it more to omicron and ba2 and then offer the booster like you offer the changed flu booster so we don't always blindly support the vaccines we question it i'm not planning to take the second booster or the fourth shot yet till it is made compulsory by the place where i work at i'm going to follow the science i'm going to follow the guidelines by my local government there's a saying in latin it says kis quis custodiet ipsos custodes that means who guards the guards who guards us from the doctors from the pharma industry from politicians from this and that and the basic question that cuts to the cuts to the chase is who guards us from ourselves in this time of disinformation and like just the social media overload so to answer the question simply yes there are increased thrombotic events yes there are increased cardiac event it could have happened because of covid it could have happened because of stress it could have happened because of the combination vaccine can cause a very small thrombotic risk but it does not appear related to that so when we keep talking historically about whether the vaccine could have caused it it's like we are on titanic and we are moving the lifeboats and the lifeboats lifeboats cause some brush injuries or some other injuries and we are saying oh maybe the lifeboats caused injuries is not the life boats is the damn iceberg that's hurtling towards you scraping the dark deep dreary desolate bottom of atlantic and that iceberg is your problem luckily the countries that matter to me the most united states and india have met this iceberg and equaled it there are a lot of natural diseases and vaccine both the countries should do okay now nothing to worry about but we are men of science so we will take everything seriously and keep looking at it dr ravi goes